Um, we'll let this go here. So this video here is by Morgan Donner. Uh, if again, content we're going to watch here is not my content. I'm just watching and uh, giving my comments here. So if you like this, make sure you come over here to Morgan Donner's channel, hit the subscribe and like button. Uh, this one I have seen before, but I love it so much. I want to watch it again. Uh, this is the SCA or the Society for Creative Anachronisms. Uh, this is a historical group uh, that does do heavy combat, fencing combat, archery combat, um, equestrian combat. They do all sorts of different types of combat. But one of the things that I love about them the most is their off the field research and the off the field persona research and the crafts that they do off the field. So this is a arts and science fair where she goes through and just gets a bunch of different uh, takes and views on some of the things that have been entered. So we're gonna we're gonna watch this. She has a great channel. If you're not subscribed to her, you should be. Good morning. I'm Morgan Donner, and today I am at another event. Uh, I'm already dressed and ready to go. Now, this event is going to be a little bit different than uh, you've maybe seen before, because instead of being out in the beautiful wilderness dressed up funny, we are instead <laughs> at a school dressed up funny. This event is less about living history and more of a showcase of artisan skill. It's a great chance for our local artists to display all of the things that they've made in the past year or before. No one's judging. I like our little Laurel pen right there. Laurel if, uh, is kind of the equivalent to Serpent Knight and Amp Guard, if you're familiar with any of that stuff. Uh, they get the pens that they can wear for their different uh, the different orders. Uh, essentially, then. Peerage is what they call it. Ampguard would be familiar with knighthood. Uh, they have, I think, five orders of the peerage, something like that. And get feedback on their items, get lots of oohs and ahs. It's a really good chance for people who you might not necessarily see the thing that they make very I want to take a moment to take a break from our regularly scheduled programming and give a plug for my business, Dragon Masters. Over at Dragon Masters, I make woven belts for Amp Guard, Dagger here, and any other LARP that you can think of. At this point, I have hundreds of belts across most of Amp Guard's kingdoms and across many different realms in Dagger here in Belgarth. And my goal with these belts are to make belts that are going to last longer than you. My goal is to give you a legacy belt that you will be able to wear for as long as you want to wear it, but then we'll also be able to pass it down to that next generation, that next player in your belt line, at your park, friend, family, whatever it happens to be. All the belts that I make are made of paracord and macrame and are made of the highest quality materials. If you're interested in taking a look at my belts, there's a link in the description below for Etsy. Uh, on there, I have all sorts of belts that are ready to ship out the next day. These are ones I've already made. But if you're interested in something custom, ch check out my Dragon Masters Facebook page. You can go through and see all of the custom work that I have ever made. And I would love to get you a custom Knight's belt or a custom Squire belt, or maybe you're looking for something in particular for a fighting company we also i will also do discounts uh, if you want to order a large amount for your fighting company your park uh, do do discounts there so thank you for listening to my plug let's get back to the main action for example if a beautiful. scribe were to make a beautiful scroll wow. and then it goes to the person it's being awarded to and then no one ever sees it again. That's awesome. It's a shame, but that's the way that some of these things tend to go. So this is a really great event where everyone digs out all the things that are really cool that they've been making in the past, you know, a couple of years and maybe get advice from people on some of the new things that they're starting to make, feedback, tips and tricks, things of that nature. So it's a really, really cool event that we've only been doing for a couple of years. And I'm really excited. It reminds me of a, uh, like a science fair type of thing. See some of the lovely displays. I love it. So this, I'm going to reiterate here because it's it's kind of a big difference. Uh, the SCA between a lot of the, the boffer games, uh, not only is the combat pretty different, but the um, atmosphere of the game is different. Uh, you are expected to, your character needs to be a realistic person or at least someone that could have existed in reality uh you pick an era and you pick a culture uh so for instance my my character is 13th century mongolian uh jebe and 
the character is supposed to be historical and or could realistically be historical so your your garb your uh food your projects uh the, everything that you do needs to be as close to historical as you can um and so knowing that's not the same as in every game but just knowing that going into this game which is you're going to see a lot of difference in the garb and the crafts that they make because their goal is to get as close to historically accurate as they can so it's gonna be a little different uh between maybe what you're used to and what you're gonna see here It's almost uh, like a Civil War reenactment, but for Middle Ages. Oh, well. All right, so I went inside and took a look around, and there are so many really awesome tables full of art that I'm really excited to share with you guys. I don't know how great the audio quality is going to be <laughs> because it is in a building so the noise just kind of bounces around and it's loud. <laughs> but Excuse me. We do the best we can and uh, I'm hoping that you can hear a little bit about each of the, the tables and, and artists that are displayed today. That's awesome. My name is Taryn Destinger from the Shire of Glyndufin, which mundanely is Jackson County, centered on Medford, Oregon. I am mostly working on tailoring techniques, uh, focusing on pad stitching currently, hmm. which is a structural stitch used to make collars stand and to make suit jackets modernly, among other things. Um, I dabble in a lot of other arts, but my primary focus is in late period, which is 16th century German garb. I don't know, man. If it takes me more than 10 minutes to put something on, I'm probably not going to wear it too often. <laughs> like I love, I love late period stuff. It's absolutely gorgeous to look at. But uh, there's a reason I like my Mongolian or my uh, my Anglo-Saxon stuff. It's it's pretty easy to just slip on and go <laughs> my name is Otani and I'm oh, I love block printing displaying some block carvings I got into block carving originally because I couldn't afford brocade and SCA is a beautiful way to learn how to make it work mm -hmm. also some null bending um, and some tablet weaving and I am so pleased to be here uh, null bending is a Norse Viking um, style of, of weaving almost it's not really weaving more crochet i guess uh, but they use it for uh, mittens and socks and things like that and then you can see the trim here you can use this as belts you can use this as trim on garb um, you can use it for all sorts of different stuff i'm misia raposa i am displaying a cloak that i am making from raw wool wow. i'm also Oof. displaying contraceptive and abortive fashion herbs that were used uh, in antiquity and through the Middle Ages. I'm also displaying dental techniques from She's the, all over the place. 11th through the 16th centuries, including herbs that were used for mouthwashes and also tools that were used for extracting teeth. And so with that one there, you can see kind of the difference um, at least in my experience in AmpGuard, that's something I wish that we could learn from the SCA, is the research side. Um, a lot of that stuff wasn't, some of it, right, was creating things. Um, and we have that. But what we don't have is an avenue for to reward people for, for good research, right? She was looking up the, the different types of um, things that you could use for dentistry, that doesn't necessarily have a place in a lot of the, the other LARPs that I have played. So I, I like the research aspect of this game. It's probably my favorite part is that it gives, it rewards you for doing good research. Hello, this is Tabitha Morgan's table. Today we are showing a, a day in the food of an English woman in 1570s London. All right, I would try these. I would try these. I don't know what the other stuff is. We'll see. We'll see. We have fresh fruit and season cherries, which was mm. very popular. I try those. Time. We have uh, bread that I made myself. We've got cheeses, stuffed eggs. We've got an applesauce, and we've got these little, little meatball looking things that are spinach fritters. They're fried, huh. and they actually taste kind of like cookies of all things. Weird. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Mona Boucher. I'm also known as Catalane Van Der Ass. I live in Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories of Canada. I dye cloth in the piece cool. using natural dyes. That's neat. I am Aurora from Wywood. Today's project is on my dolls, uh, ankle weaving, and my heraldic dress. Sometimes. Let's mute this as we go through our ad right here. From visiting all the artists, and I wanted to introduce you guys to one of the coordinators for this event. This is Charles. He's fantastic, and I wanted to <laughs> thank you. tell you I like his or crown. have you hear a little bit about the event from him. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so this is our second year uh, with this uh, type of event. What it really boils down to is it's a medieval science fair. It's not so much about a traditional uh, reenactment event that we do, where outdoors, you know, there's fighting, you know, merchants. So you can see for the SEA fighting, uh, how it's a little different than there's fighting. most of the LARP stuff. So in this game, in most LARPs, you pad the weapons. Uh, so you get foam weapons or latex weapons, um, and then you don't have to wear armor. In this game, these are rattan sticks, uh, I think broom handles. And to fight this game, these are 14 gauge helmets. Uh, you have to have kidney protection, elbow protection, knee protection, groin protection, and neck protection, and then hand protection as well. Um, and you can wear more armor than that if you want. Like this guy's got chain on, but you don't, those are the minimums. Um, and you can wear full plate if you want to. You can see this guy over here in the background has more. Uh, but instead of padding the weapons like most boffer games do, uh, the SCA pads the person. And so be, to play the game, you have to have more armor than the boffer games. And it does tend to be a harder hitting game uh, because, again, you're swinging wood at each other. Uh, so you'll notice most of the combat is still the same. Uh, arms and legs work fairly similar. You can swing at the face. Uh, stabs on the bar grill count. Um, most shots on the, the side of the head and the top of the head count. And you'll see them die. They, they fall over. Very similar to, to what you're used to. You know, merchants, uh, you know, arts and sciences, you know, it, it, where it's a holistic event, but not necessarily art focused. And this one really is not just about focusing on art, but allowing artisans to showcase all of their work. And that's something that they don't get to do in a, in, in a sort of a traditional mm -hmm. uh, event here at the, in the SCA. And so our artisans told us for a long time, like they needed something different, they needed something more, they needed something that was display, um, where they could show more of their like the breadth of their talent rather than the depth. We often see the depth, we don't usually get to see the breadth. Hmm. And you know, it works. And yeah. like, it is, it has been quite a success. You know, this is year two. We have a hundred more people in than we did last cool. year. Cool. So I'm hoping in year three, there's a hundred more. <laughs> and if any of y'all want to come, <laughs> reach out to her. <laughs> it's been great. I'd get lost in something like Welcome that. Welcome to Athenam. My name is Erin, and today I am displaying oh, a that's so cool. selection of garments that date between 1590 and about 1610, 1615. They're all based off of pieces that are in the Victorian Albert Museum or uh, the Janet Arnold Patterns of Fashion, the Medici burial clothing. There is a comparison that I'm trying to demonstrate between methodologies for machine sewing with a little bit of hand sewing versus 100% hand sewn. And I've been sort of experimenting with how long and how much investment oh, goes cool. into full hand sewing versus about 70% machine sewing with some fine tuning in hand sewing. The suns were awesome. I'm Nathaniel Lakarov. Today I'm displaying null bound mittens and hats. I am displaying co-rosed. I like his comb there too. That's one of the things I've been looking at uh, trying is uh, Anglo-Saxon Viking era uh, handmade combs. I think that would be pretty fun. Boons and a game board and pewter casting where I've done slush casting on bells <laughs> and whistles and ampullae and I wanted to experiment to see what the difference would be in the tone if I just changed the thickness of the bell itself and the different clapper styles. 
I'm Rotrude Halfblind and I am making laminated leather boxes. These are really common in the 15th, 14th, 16th centuries to hold That's your cool. valuable stuff in. Glasses, books, uh, precious things. So the first layer of leather together and then subsequent layers are laminated and glued on with rabbit skin glue, which you can buy at the art supply store <laughs> for sizing canvas. And then I make them seamless, real smooth, and then dye and paint them. And uh, I've made several of these now, and I'm very excited about them. Yeah, those are neat. I'm Baroness Ely, and this is my null binding table, an example of all of my, my crafts. So uh, my fun fact is that null binding is not a Viking-only art form. The Romans had it. The Egyptians had it. Um, even Papua New Guinea. So it's, hmm. it's all over the world. That's cool. I wonder if there's an actual competition, like so a tournament. So that just about wraps up the event. I am very tired and very hungry, so I think I'm going to head off, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching and seeing some of the cool projects that we had to share, and you all have a wonderful day. That's neat. So if you like this video, uh, come and subscribe to Morgan Donner. Uh, like the video, this was Medieval Arts and Science Fair uh, Athenium 2019. <laughs>